That's it, Ned. Hello, welcome to the club call. It's Wednesday, the third of May. Me and John Blaine are starting. There'll be a little sub in about 20 minutes. I'll pull up with a hamstring injury, pedal take over, and we'll go from there. But, John, good to see you back from uh, a little break that you've had. Yep. Um, this is the best show, this. No, you know, I mean, John, there's lots of different shows that people like. But you like do. this one? Me? I mean, I can. don't know what Ned's doing playing it again. I don't know. Anyway, the yeah. audio engineer playing it back through. Um, is that what it was? Still there. I mean, I can still hear it. I don't know. Uh, yeah, you know. Um, it, just, it does matter when it's blasting out. Ah, mate, Frank didn't have another good result last night. Sixth. No, no, six. The Magnificent Seven would be the next one. There was a thing put out last night, though, a thing on by the Telegraph, which was actually wrong, where he'd had one win in about 40 games because Everton hadn't lost that many games before we beat Crystal Palace. So that was a little bit harsh. But in the main, it's 16 games, I think. One win in 16, not great. Um, you were at Leicester the other night. You've had a couple of days to digest the result. Good point, bad point. Uh, two. I, I, when I say bad points, I mean two points dropped, or is it just a oh, case of I was gonna say, carry it on? It has to be a good point if you get one, doesn't it? I suppose, mm. but but it's a bad point in the sense that it could and perhaps should have been like recent away games actually mm. should have been three, mm. and, and and the inability to score and the ability to make unforced errors, which results mm. in the opposition scoring. If we go down, that's what will have caused it. Mm. Just those two simple things. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about goals. It, absolutely it is absolutely um what about what about the call it takeover stuff but the investment stuff have you heard anything is anything progressed on that or or do you do you not expect to hear anything until the season's done and dusted anyway would you be surprised you know, i'll rephrase it would you be surprised if it was concluded before everton's fu immediate um, future is i determined? perhaps wouldn't be surprised if it was concluded before the end of the season okay but i might be surprised if they announced it <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Because yeah, uh, yeah that's what I meant. And now it's more. Be, yeah, because um, it appears to me that some of the actors involved are, are, are working towards an end of season deadline. Yeah. Seems to me it's crystal clear that there'll be board changes mm. during the closed season, and and therefore you know having worked in big ticket stuff for many a long year, one of the things before I jacked it all in. Um, be, what we always used to say is the only deadline that mattered was the, the time that the prospective client insisted you submit your bid. You right, know? okay, yeah. And it didn't matter how much planning you did. It didn't matter how diligent you were, how big your team was. Yeah. You always got it right, got, got it ready just in time. Okay. Um, so, so, yeah, I mean, I think I only ever worked on one bid where we managed to stick to the timetable. And, right. and we, we were finished a week before we needed to submit. And um, maybe that wasn't a surprise that that was the biggest deal we ever won. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I, I think um, if we think realistically a deadline is before the start of next season, then to get the deal right, why wouldn't they take all the time that they need? Mm. Um, clearly, the stadium is a drain on cash. Um, Shiri's talked consistently about uh, that this is about investment for the stadium. Um, we know because we spoke to him, or you were around when I spoke to him, him being Mr. Mashiri, last July, that he said the stadium was funded to the end of this year. Um, and, and that just means that the prices have gone up, which they might have done. Don't let's get into the complications of whether it was a fixed price or not, because mm. it was, but there's, we can talk about that in business with Blaine if you want, about mm, yeah. how can a fixed price not be a fixed price? Yeah. Um, um, and, and therefore, cash is, is a challenge. So, but you know, make decisions in haste is, is not a good thing. No. And um, but we were told that was heads of terms in place. Um, we assume that was with MSP. Um, we know we've had in the past all this rubbish about lockout periods and all that, but heads of terms don't really expire. Yeah. Right. Um, but it does do the bird in the hand thing. So mm -hmm. maybe if they're still talking, it's because they're talking about things which they think a bit like the Glaziers, really. Yeah. Um, maybe the next bid will be better than the last one. And, and we, we don't have to make a decision until someone threatens to walk away, um, then then you're okay, aren't you? So let's see. Do you, would you be surprised if another bid come in? Or do you think it is just 
between, it seems to be just between MSP and 777. I, I think it is interesting because the, the, the football club fundamentally is locked down talking to people, hasn't it, really? Mm. There's not a lot going on. That means there's a very narrow channel of insight. If yeah. indeed it is insight, it might just be PR. Yeah. Mm. Um, and, and I think it's quite uh, interesting that it seems to be, and certainly some journalists are talking this way, that it's one of two. Mm. Um, there's other stuff going on, which is not those two. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Therefore, I, I, I struggle to, for how people can credibly think. I mean, of course, if you're a journalist, you have to believe what the club told you, course, right? Yeah. Um, and, you know, you need to learn lessons about whether the club always tells you the truth or not, or whether they tell you the truth based on what they've been told. Because, mm. of course, the guy talking to the journalist only knows what his bosses have told him. And if his bosses don't even know what's going on, then... You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it would not at all surprise me if much of what's going on is going on in Farhad's house and not in mm -hmm. the Royal Liver building. Yeah. Uh, and therefore, why would club people know anyway? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but but I'm pretty certain there's more than two. Let's put it that way. Mm. Fair comments. Fair yeah. comments. Two things for you to do. A bit of housekeeping. Subscribe. Yeah. And hit the like button. There you go. Dead easy. Dead easy. Um Rob asking how does he call in he's a Premier member Rob the link just underneath the headline on the Trophy TV Premier the link is there click on that Ned will get you in the, the room and get you sorted dead easy to do takes three seconds um, good news from Seamus Coleman today that he hasn't done his ACL which is a which is a huge thing because I'll be honest when I seen him going off I wondered if that was him done career-wise as well. If it had been an ACL, you might think almost certainly exactly. yes. Exactly. Um, don't know what, don't know what, you know, how bad his injury is. It, it, it can't be broken because it would be... They would have that. said it's not that, but it's yeah. this, yeah. So maybe it's just a, maybe it's just a neat yard and it's a couple, you know, couple of weeks. You just never know, do you? Um, but That was the penalty. Was it, yeah. I the, put the my bruising. hands up. And, well, I put my hands up to sell it, as you do. Yeah. And somebody hit me. I don't know. Who and you've was. got a big bruise on you. Yeah. And swelling and all that. Everything else. Just you. Like, you're you're your it. excuse of playing it. Mine is. Better. My hand's still not right. It's yeah. still. I still well, can't grip. I'm surprised yeah. how swollen it is. Yeah. It's black. It's like it's yeah. black, isn't it? <laughs> there you go. Um, <laughs> but yes, great news for Seamus. And uh, we wait for the next bit of news that basically says, I guess, he'd be ready for the start of next season. Hopefully. Yeah. I'll say. Or just the have Blues to start says, his coaching career instead. The yeah. Blues says, why does everyone call the Glazers the Glaziers, not just John Byron? Loads do, don't they? Maybe we just think they're really good with glass. Tonight, yeah. Maybe that's what it is, the Glaziers. Yeah. Loads of people do. It's an accent, mate. Right? <laughs> but, you know, that's uh, the yeah. way it is. It's bollocks, probably yeah. really good with glass. Yeah. That's all it is. And we just think, you know, fair play. I thought I'd said Glazers, but obviously not. Yeah. Glaziers. It's all good. What did I say, John? Glaziers. You're just agreeing with him. I'm not, people wouldn't say glazy. No, I'm not saying I didn't say it. I'm da, she she was going to answer that, and then Gem she goes, "No, I'll go with whatever pet, bad says." Jim knows. Jim knows. Her bottle's gone now. If we ever get in front of a camera, it's going to be she great sad. fun. She knows what yeah. she's doing. She's yeah. the, she knows Filmmakers, what, what are you like? <laughs> um, no, Ned. Nothing there. No, no one waiting. That's no good. one wants to talk. That's good. Um, Trophy TV Premier members, the lines are now open, so off you go with anything you want to say. It can be the game, the manager, players, owners, whatever you want. It could be even Sam Allardyce, if you so wish. Can I say something then say that I heard on national radio the other night go on. on the way back from the game? To those people you were just talking to, mm? there's no one in the waiting room. If you put your name in now, you'll come straight on. Mm -mm, straight on. And that's Hold what TalkSport said. Exactly. So they got flooded yeah. with Evertonians. <laughs> off you go, yeah. yeah. Done and dusted. The um, yeah, yeah. I was gonna, I was gonna ask you something about. Shall I ask about Allardyce? Come on, go on. Thoughts on Sam Allardyce coming into Leeds? Four um, games, half a million quid, no matter what, keeps them up. Three million bonus. Yeah, or well, two and a half, isn't or it? Or two with the, the thing. What's your thoughts? Um, well, there's a myth about him doesn't get relegated. Mm. Yeah, so that's the first thing. And it's only a myth because he took West Brom down, isn't it? He did. But prior to that, he had this reputation. Mm -hmm. um, if you're the owners of Leeds, who are a bit bloody gunslinger types mm -hmm. anyway, they shouldn't have pointed the guy they've just sacked, should they really? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You think, if we keep this manager, what happens? We get relegated. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Let's have somebody else then. <laughs> yeah. Can't be worse type of attitude. Mm -hmm. There is 
also a, a relatively mythical view that you get a new manager bounce. Yeah. Um, but not normally when you're playing your first game against Man City. Mm. Not normally. Yeah, uh, not normally, and that's the point. Mm. So it's it's a 500 grand gamble mm. that if we stay up, we'll happily pay him another two and a half million quid. Yeah, yeah. Um, for him, though, not to lose. There's no reputation to lose. He hasn't worked for two years anyway. Mm. He probably literally is retired, and he's told his missus, I'm, I'm buggering off for three weeks, but mm. I'll, I'll, I might come back with three million quid. And she said, off you go then. Yeah. I've got my eyes on a lovely handbag. And for yeah. him, he can... He could say, well... I've done it again. I am, Well, if they go, he could say, we only have four games. Yeah. Had they been there for 10, I'd have kept them up. Well, absolutely. Um, I mean, you can see it now. If they get battered by City, I've only had them for two days. Yeah. Well, well yeah. you know, I'm, I am a miracle worker, but come on, you know? Yeah. It is mad, isn't it? It is, it is. It is mad. But for at least, um, put it in context, there will be an aura around the fact that he does perform these miracles. Therefore, the opposition will think he'll make a difference mm. so the rest of football and particularly the gaggle near the bottom they want city to do their duty mm. and destroy that myth in one game in one game they've got two easy games to be fair that they start with city away newcastle at home yeah, that's right yeah so probably and the they worst. finish with tottenham probably the worst two teams they could have played yeah the yeah. early at the moment the two form, form teams form. yeah form. yeah, yeah. Um, so if they both burn them then you know and then sorry Ned. Oh yeah, could you put your net when you you come into the waiting room, Trophy TV Premier members? Can you put your name in the chat so Ned knows who's up next? They've got City away, Leeds at home, West Ham away. That's the one I couldn't remember. Yeah, they West could lose Ham all away. those. Yeah. yeah, and Spurs at home. Let's see, Allison to keep us up last day again. Mm. Chelsea just must hope that there's only four games left. Chelsea, they can't get to the summer quick enough, can they? No, the. Um, Someone put, I've heard on TalkSport, Dyke said Keane deserves an England call. I, ca I wouldn't like to comment whether that, I, does someone just say, I don't know. Is that someone saying someone said? Uh, oh, I don't they've know. heard it themselves, oh. I don't know. That Dyke is uh, hanging himself if he said that. Yeah, I can't, he can't have said that. No. He can't have said that. Uh, Talky Toffee says, why do you think Dyke likes Keane so much? I think he's just had them before. Thinks he understands the, the player understands what he wants and he's put him in. But I don't know, I had no problem with him putting him in if he thought Cody was making mistakes. But then you have to shoot everyone by the same hmm. tariff, then don't you? If someone's then making mistakes, you take him up, you try someone else. If he'd have changed a couple of them to try to come up with something that was working, I don't think any ever told him would have said a word. No, but when you take one player out who's been steady this season, done well, then um. See, I can't remember, and we'll go to Rob, I guess, in yeah. a minute, but I can't remember whether Mina was still injured when at the derby and therefore Cody got taken out. Was Keane his only choice? And we took him out for Arsenal away. And Mina, I don't know what Mina was, but he took Cody out and put Keane in. That's what I mean. For Arsenal But at away. that point, was it... And it ended 4-0. No, no, but at that point, did he Mina think... Mina will have been injured. Though. Yeah, because he mostly is, yeah. 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 Anyway, there you go. Let's go. Hello, we've got Rob. Our stat open. Our first check one. So, Rob, hello. Hello, lads. How are you? Yeah, yeah can we can hear you loud yeah. and clear, mate. What do you want to say? How are things? How are All things? good. Uh, just ringing up, I suppose. First time caller. I've been listening to you for quite a while now and just bit the bullet and subscribed there a couple of days ago. Good, man. Um, so, I was really just wondering kind of how it all worked and now I'm able to get through. Um, I just wanted to kind of, John, I suppose, you know, I've been listening to you and in relation to the building costs and things like that for the stadium, um, I'm involved kind of from the other side of things. I do kind of the insurance that's provided to the contractors that will build these things. So mm. I'd be used to seeing kind of um, increased building costs or, you know, delays due to materials and things like that, especially after Brexit. Sure. And, you know, all sorts of delays. My big question is, seeing it from the other side, is, like, to me, it seems like Mashiri's done. That's how it feels to me. But I just wonder, you know, if you buy the club for a certain amount of money and then you build a stadium, I mean, to the average football fan like me, it feels like that's something you would do to increase the value of the club. So you bought it and you've now built a stadium. It's now worth significantly more than it was when you bought it. Yep. What does relegation do there, plus with... You know, an owner who, in my opinion, would 
with Curtis Lodge's right now and take perhaps less than what he paid for it, can you just kind of touch on what this all means? Like, I mean, what, 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 are, what do we think is going to happen here with a new stadium, but we're in the championship? Is this going to detrimentally affect the value of the club or will Mishiri kind of hold on and, you know, refuse to let it go for a profit? Or do you think he'd take what he paid right now and just walk away? Um, <laughs> certainly the latter is the easiest of the questions that you just asked mm-hmm. then, mm-hmm. which is he'll just take what he can get for it and walk away. Uh, clearly, I think he's past that point um, because it is interesting because because we have... Uh, commentators, if you will, talking about the club's not worth anything. It's worth next to nothing. In in objective terms, that is, it's perhaps worth 100, 150 million quid or something. But you then say, well, hang on a minute, we've got players worth more than that. Mm. We've got a two-thirds or three-quarters, whatever it is, stadium worth more than that. Mm. And actually, football clubs don't necessarily trade for what they're worth objectively because... Um, they actually trade on what people are prepared to pay for them, right? And trade on what um, the owner in, who's in situ is prepared to accept for it. I mean, if you if we take a real example, like Man United, because they're on a stock market, then you can go right now. In fact, I could probably do it while I'm talking, if I can multitask. And you can see objectively what the capital value is of, of that business. Mm-hmm. But what the Glazers are asking for is substantially more than that. I mean, Man United right now is allegedly worth 3.25 billion. Okay. So in theory, if you could go and buy all the shares, it costs you 3.25 billion, but they want somewhere between five and six. And they've got two suitors who are prepared to pay between Mm. five and six. And that is they're buying what they need to to spend to get it. If you look at the, 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 the average share price of shares trading in Everton right now because there's so few of them you know the minority shareholders you know the people who might have one or up to ten or whatever it might be they trade at about three and a half thousand pounds each right. now Farhad Mashiri when he did his share placements in the last couple of years which got him another hundred thousand shares he may have bought them at around that price but when he wanted to buy control he paid double or triple that yeah yeah so the valuation of a football club is a bit of a dark art, I suppose, because it's all down to what people are prepared to pay. To answer your question, the football club is worth a hell of a lot more with a stadium, no matter what league we're in, mm-hmm. because that stadium's going to be full. Yeah, yeah. Right? Um, if we get relegated and we're in the championship, that stadium is going to be pretty close to, if not totally full, in every single game. And the pricing has already been set. Yeah, the shareholders, the uh, season ticket holders have ninety eight percent renewed, and the the other two percent will be taken up by people on the waiting list. So, if you're trying to sell the business or sell a percentage in the business, you actually perversely say, if we if we look at the pillars of income that we have, which is match day income, that's going to not necessarily be impacted by relegation. Mm. Our commercial income clearly could be impacted but we're so poor at it anyway perversely as the dominant you know if you like marketable entity in the championship it might it might actually go up in yeah. some respects but lots of the other stuff around the variable spend on merchandise and and hospitality and all those sorts of things success and winning games makes it easy for people to spend money so if you're a real spin doctor you might be able to convince somebody actually and this goes back to the, the infamous you said it yesterday, Baz, if we can be guaranteed to be promoted after one season, mm-hmm. it could be a good thing. Yeah. I would go so far as to say if we got relegated and we could guarantee to come back after one season, it definitely would be a good thing. Yeah. Because we'd come back with a good a feel good factor. We'd have pushed away a lot of the, 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 the dead wood, if you will. We'd have moderated expectations of incoming players on salaries and, and those sorts of things. We'll probably get the inverse. Instead of having relegation clauses, we'll have promotion clauses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, um, to answer your question, Rob, um, I think Farhad Mashiri, he's past the point when he would have jumped ship with what he could get. And now he'll stick around until he can get what he wants. Let's see. Yeah, that's... <clears throat> That's kind of my fear, to be honest with you. Um, Your fear? Yeah, well, I mean, look, you know, this guy is very successful, obviously, and he's made a ton of money not by being, you know, he may not know anything about football, but he's quite clearly a very bright individual. 
And my fear is that if we go down, I mean, I'm looking at the Everton first team squad here on the website. You know, it says we've got eight defenders um, and you're looking at them and, you know, two of them are on loan within Cody and Bernagri. And, you know, you probably wouldn't want to keep four out of the other six. So, you know, it's all well and good saying we'll sell players and let players go and not renew contracts and bump out on loan, whoever we have to put out on loan. But we're still going to need to have a squad. Mm. And my fear is that it just gets to the stage where this guy almost does kind of like what Sunderland did a few years ago, just doesn't put any money into the club, basically refuses to take anything less than what he feels it's worth. And then we're just kind of stuck in this limbo position where, you know, if we don't come up first time of asking, we may never come back up. Um, I mean, the the scenarios you can... um run through till the cows come home you know mm. we you know we could we could have a show where we say right someone comes up with a half full scenario and someone then comes up with a half empty scenario and and we compare and contrast you know because if you go back a uh, two or three years then there was a football club in the premier league who were desperate to get rid of their owner because he ran a tight ship he didn't give a damn what the fan base thought. He kept putting the ticket prices up. He kept not spending money on players. And lo and behold, that football club didn't have any debt and therefore became an incredibly attractive club to purchase. Mm-hmm. So the Saudis did, and they're going to be in the Champions League next season. Spot on. Absolutely that, spot on. You know, that's yeah. a half-full version. Yeah. The half-empty version is you, you have to decimate the squad to try and make the finances stack up. Um, you can't live on your own... Um, if you like self-sufficiency, but let's not be shy here, right? Let's go back to, we'll have a big assumption. Um, go back to, we're only in the championship for one season. We'll have the biggest fan base, yeah. the biggest match day income, yeah. the biggest wage bill, yeah. the biggest turnover. We'll be the proverbial big fish in a small pond. Yeah. Uh, you look at Burnley now, they've run away with the league. Mm. It would not surprise me if they got relegated next season, because it happens so yeah. it happens so often. Two or three, yeah. two of the three go straight back again because the leap from the Premier League to the Championship is massive. Okay, so by the same token, if you approach it correctly, if you're relegated, you should become instantly the big fish in a small pond, unless. You are a yo-yo club who have always been a championship club who mm. periodically spend a little bit of time in the Premier League. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so I'm a naturally optimistic person. So I, I go with if we do get relegated, and it's by no means certain yet, um, we'll come straight back. And when we come back, we'll be in a better place than we were when we went down. Great. Well, ha- look, I, I hope I can share that optimism. It's great to hear. Yeah. And um I feel like as a first-time caller, it's only fair to ask the two lads a question. So, Baz, I've won for you as well. Keep coming on, back, mate. my friend. Don't, 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 don't make it a one-off. Yeah, yeah keep coming back. Yeah. Go on, mate. No, it's, it's brilliant. As, as I said, I listen to you every day. I walk the dog. I'm at home with the kids after school. <laughs> so I listen every day, and I bit the bullet and called up. So I'm delighted. You now, I have to say, the content is it's worth every cent, to be honest with you. So absolutely buzzing. Thanks, mate. Um, Get that quote, Baz, somebody, like quick. Me. Go on, mate. Go on. <laughs> well, just ask you one thing. Go on. Um, I, I heard you joking about this this morning, I think, yeah. on the, the afternoon show, um, about the last day of the season, mm. if we're already down, not letting fans in. Now, yeah. I had a look this morning. I'm obviously in Ireland. I'm not a season ticket holder, so I have to buy them when they go on general sale. I think they put them on sale today for, you know, the people with those memberships. Yeah, you yeah. Get like, uh, you get a pen or whatever you get, something for your kids, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Where's he gone? He's still there. Oh, Rob, he's just going to ask me something. It's going to be good as well. Is he still there? Are we waiting in limbo? They just should have shot that day because... Let's talk about something else. He's gone. Hopefully Rob will come back. Hopefully he'll come back. I was wondering what he was going to... He was probably going to say, what would you do if we're already down? There is obviously... There's the, well, what joke did you do today? No, there's the urban legend, isn't it? That, oh, it, hang on. Are you back? Are you there, Rob? You still there, Rob? No, so, there's some audio. No. Okay. Okay. Well, if he comes back, if not, and he's what? There's an urban myth. Message that... him to ask us the question on, on the chat. Well, I'll be yeah. gone. I've got to go. Yeah, well, yeah. That if Everton are relegated, that the game will be played behind closed doors. That is one that's on the airwaves. 
Good luck with that one. Uh, They're being breach of contract. So they're being breach of contract. Well, whatever. But that's that's one of the things. Who started that? It wouldn't be it, it wouldn't be a nice place to be if I was a, a player on that day. Well, I don't care. Coming out in front there. Off. I've got a ticket that I paid money for. To refund you? No. <laughs> Look, you just go. No, not refunding me. They're not. You're not giving me my money back. But it'd be interesting. It won't only be board members who are out of work if that happens. <laughs> let's just let's just win a win a Brighton or something. Do something mental. Go away to a good team and win. Yeah. You know why not? Why not? Ped, can you get yourself over here? Oh, Rob's back. Hello, Rob. Go on, go on, mate. Ask me a question. Bye, lads. Sorry. Can, you, can you hear me? Yeah, yes. perfectly. Yeah. yeah. Apologies, the kids were killing each other and I had to uh, break up a little fight there. No problem. So I was going to ask, so, so basically I was online this morning, mm -hmm. kind of half debating getting a ticket for the Bournemouth game. Yeah. Um, I saw they go on sale to members right. and then they go on general sale on Friday. So it's actually already sold out. Mm. And I kind of half heard just joking this morning about if we're already down, mm -hmm. that Goodison, you know, they may not let people in. <laughs> I just wonder, does anybody see any situation if we're down last day of the season where they just don't let people in the stadium? No, I think or it's what, it's like what do people I was just saying to John, it's like an urban there's an urban myth that's going around, but it would be a it'd be a huge call for them to turn around and go, No one's coming in, wouldn't it? Really when you think about it. So I I, I don't see that really being a situation. And Everton will be listen, let's hope that that isn't we can stay up. Maybe the board yeah. want to be there for the yeah, last home the board, game. That's the one, maybe. So no they'll be in. in just they'll the be in and no one else. Yeah, we, we all have to stay out for that one. But, um, no, I, I don't really see that being realistic, mate. The public disorder concerns they may have would just transfer to the streets. To the street, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. So. so The best thing would be, Rob, yeah, yeah, yeah. is if we, can, if we can just still survive, wouldn't it? That would mm. be the best scenario. Yes, and absolutely. And then they need the crowd, don't they? They ain't doing it on their own. They prove that. You'll need the crowd, so absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Well, look, thanks for having me, lads. I better go because the kids go on, are mate. Go on, really go on, yeah, time. go and keep the peace, and, uh, and we'll see you soon. Like, you, All right, cheers, cheers, Rob. Take, take care. care. Ta -ra, pal, ta -ra. Bye bye. Cheers. Right, we're gonna have a little sub head. Grab your laptop. I'm going to do the footy thing semi final or semi final? No, semi final. Kids, semi. How many are expecting to win by playing a team in the league above? So it's going to be tough. But last game they played against the team the league above, they beat them 4-0, 3-0. So. You're taking an OB crew with you for interviews at the end. Just there, uh, mate, ready. Got people coming in. Sky there. See you later. Take care. Good luck. Cheers. And here's the man. I literally set up a camera to have it on you so that when we done the show... This wouldn't happen. Even see it. Yeah. You wouldn't even see it. But my professionalism is, is just... It's not... It's not it's just not, it's not there. It's it not there, Paddy. It's not, well. I was surprised it was facing the wrong way. Yeah. Well, you know, John. Like, the first mistake is allowing people to set up cameras the wrong way. Bye, so. Barry. Bye, Barry. Ooh. Ned Sanner, Ned Sanner and Press. Ned Sanner and Press. People, aren't you, Ned? Um, hang on, let me just get. The thing I've just been thrown in the deep end. See, there's no, there's no. You could have done this on the sofa. I, I didn't. You know when you just like, you know, couldn't be asked. No, like, like you know, you you think people might stick around longer because it's the jobs and stuff. But you know, it's fine. That's fine. It's, you know, the lack of professionalism is 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 fine. Yeah. Need any more callers? Waiting for. I'll ask if he's still there. Isn't he? What are you busy? His name's Tony. But he's just Tony. A yep. Tony or the Tony? Yeah. Um, Has he got any... There's not a chance on earth an Everton game is getting played behind closed nah. doors. What a load of nonsense. <laughs> Anyone who believes that? Like, like so 40,000 people turning up to Goodison, how are you going to keep them out? There's just not a chance on earth. Mm. You know, you're basically um, playing into what people want. And you've just said there, imagine the police. The police should be throwing people into Goodison. <laughs> We know where they all are. They'd be like, yeah, exactly. so, like, we don't want them on the streets. We want them. We want them. We want them outside. Um, you were asking me just then. Well, about Yeri Mina. One, two, oh three, yes, four. yes, yes. Was he available when he made the keen decision? Yeah. Well, Yeri Mina has been available 
since the since the Brighton game. He was on the bench for the Brighton game. He was on the bench for the Manchester United game in the FA Cup. And then he came into the side for the West Ham game. And then he, and then uh, Frank Lampard was sacked and Yeri Mina has remained on the bench. So objectively, the manager chose Keane over Mina. Yeah. And he's been in ever since. Mina's regardless. been available for, the, yeah. for 2023 so far. Uh, yeah. And the manager has, 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 um, has decided against using him. And I know... There's all kinds of rumours about him as well. There's all kinds of rumours that him being Mina. Yeah, that he's got a he's got a team already and he's not acting professionally, but he's on the bench. So he he must be he must be doing he must be turning up for training and stuff like that. If he wasn't turning up for training, then the manager wouldn't put him on the bench. Simple as I that. I think um winners, yeah, I made the joke before to Baz, you know, nice guys come second sort of thing. Mm. One assumes he's quite frustrated. Yeah. Because he must believe he's better than people who are making mistakes, mm. and the people making mistakes keep getting chosen. Mm. If if the manager has decided that you're going in the summer, therefore I'm not investing in you, just say so. Yeah. You know, stop. Don't have him on the bench. Put a kid on the bench just for the experience. You know, Michael Keane is the hill that we're all going to die on. If we die, it, yeah. we'll all point at that. Yeah. Like I'm not blaming him a hundred percent, but. No, there's plenty of others. Like, like on, I said this. To the, I said this. Like on, on Monday, it was like he'd read Twitter or he read newspaper articles saying that they were gonna, he was gonna be dropped. The way he played was like when you've just found out something bad or something. He was, he was, he was terrible. He was like, and he should have been taken off last time. So you think he he expected not to play and then got told he was in the team and went, no, I, I oh. Don't... I don't think I don't think he didn't expect to play, but it was like he'd read them and it made him feel really sad. Oh, I see. And he okay. didn't have time for an afternoon cry, so he played footy instead. And that's what we got. But he should have went off at half time. Yeah. So. Well, yeah. But our manager, I mean, our manager doesn't make subs. So. He doesn't. He doesn't. Make he subs. doesn't. It's extraordinary. He it doesn't. It's, it's pathetic. Right, we've got Tony now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we've got Tony. Where's Tony from? We'll find out. Tony, are you there? All right, fellas, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, where are you, Tony? Where am I? I'm in uh, just south of Sheffield. That could, I mean, that could be anywhere, mate. That could be France. It could be. Just could north be France. Just north I'm of Zimbabwe, Chesterfield. Mate. Zimbabwe. <laughs> just north of <laughs> Chesterfield. <laughs> no, I'm right on the very, very bottom of Yorkshire. Okay. So, uh, uh, I've gradually moved further and further away from home. Just from west of Hull, then? Fair play. Yeah. Fair play. Go on, mate. Go on, mate. <laughs> um... Well, I was going to start off because I've, I've literally just subbed to, to Premier. Oh, uh, good man. I mean, a few months. Welcome. I'd say, I'd say thanks, but I just feel like you've been... Where have you, you been? We could have made so much more money <laughs> off you in the meantime. You'll have to buy well, some merch now to make up yeah. for it. The last Bella was far too nice to you know, so I can't say anything nice, otherwise I'm just blowing smoke up your ass, aren't I? So, I didn't uh, hear any of what he said, mate, so if you want to be nice to me, <laughs> I can't hear anything. It's only to be with the headphones. I was sitting yeah. over there. He was so, that... you know, be as nice as you want. And he John's that... always... He John's... was having a kip on the sofa at the time. Yeah, John always wants the compliments. It's an hard life, isn't it? It's an hard life. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, cracking content. Cheers, mate. Thank you. It's been really good. And uh, what I'd love to see is... A period of time where Toffee TV is a happy place. Wouldn't it be, boss? <laughs> just once. Wouldn't it be amazing? Yeah, just, for, just for a little bit, even like a few weeks, it'd be, it'd be absolutely top. It's called like, the World Cup. Some people, do, <laughs> some people have actually accused us of being the downfall of Everton Football Club because we started at the very back end of Martinez's first season. <laughs> so there is a correlation between... It was all right before. There is a correlation. <laughs> yeah. I feel it, yeah. There is I a correlation it. between Everton's downfall and, and, and uh, me being able to vent my spleen. But um, <laughs> no, it wouldn't have been... Me and Baz talk about this every day. We're just about to hit 78,000 subs. And that's out of pure misery like could you imagine if we could come in every day and go oh wasn't that amazing and we got all these like you know you got all sort of like happy clapper youtube people who were like you know watch all the content or do you, you know got the seventy eight thousand blues that absolutely hate themselves mm -hmm. now imagine what you could do with the happy guys exactly. and the ones that actually enjoy life no. it'd be brilliant no um but speaking of enjoying life i didn't want to just be down doom and gloom even cool. though that's kind of how i feel at the minute i wanted to start off with at least one kind of positive um and it was one of the best things i've seen on an everton in an everton game and that was seamus yes he was he was crunched yeah, and he yeah. was on a stretcher yeah but 
that fella cheering up the crowd. It got me going. Yeah, and I, I wasn't even at the game. But what what a guy. What a captain. Um, absolutely mm. top fella. Yeah. And I've seen today that he's not not done his ACL. Yeah. So I'm hoping he'll, we'll see him in a blue shirt again. But mm. absolutely top fella. Totally. No, he is. He's an amazing fella. I'll, t- I'll, tell, you, I'll tell you a little, yeah, uh, a little uh, Seamus Coleman story um, from December. Um, so we'd left here. It was just, it was between, it was before the Premier League started, back from the World Cup. And there's a petrol station in Gattaca, uh, the cheapest one around. So that's so, where you went. So I went. And there's a, there's a car and it's freezing outside. And there's a, there's a Land Rover in front of me. And he's like, it's like the only space. And out walks someone and it's dark. And I see someone in a full Everton tracksuit, but it's like the, the green one. And I went, I looked out and I went, eh, I went, come on, Seamus, move your car, will you? And he walks over to the to me. It's freezing cold. Honestly, it was freezing. He walked. It was the day we played Manchester United in the behind closed doors game. He walked over to me. He walked over and he went. I thought I recognised the voice, and he had a conversation with me for five minutes. And I'm in the car all warm, and he's standing outside in the freezing cold, asking how I am, asking how we are at Toffee TV. Uh, you know, I'm saying, oh, have you been in training today? Like trying to get a bit of info about him. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, it's tough. It's tough. He's just been playing, so he's a proper professional. Not even like, oh no, we play Man United. Proper professional. I honestly had a conversation for five minutes, and then he went, "Oh, um, you know, oh, speak to you soon." Blah blah blah. Great to see you and all that. And then just got in his car and drove off. And I just thought, normally someone would just let on to you and go, "I mean, you're all right," and then got off. But to stand there in the freezing cold for five minutes and just have a conversation with us, and he's like, "Where, where, are you, where are you based? How far away?" I, I just do it for a little, and he, he just was dead interested in my day, and I just thought he, he could have just got in his car and gone and said, "All right, mate," but he didn't. He just, and he just seemed like Jen. And I've had a few conversations with him before about different things and that, and I just, um, I just thought that was brilliant. And they're the little things where you just go, "You're a proper human mm. being. You, you're yeah. a proper human being." Genuine, genuine is yeah. the word that comes to mind mm. with Jameis, and that's what that is. Yeah. I mean, ninety-nine percent of football players might give you the nods, but then jump in the flash guard and turn the seat warmers on and bug it off. But uh, yeah, top fella. And as well, I was—I said to him, I said, "Oh, um, I said, oh, did you get away anyway?" Oh, no, no, I'd seen he'd been to New York. I was like, "Oh, oh, you went to New York," and he was like, "I'm having," a, and I'd been to New York as well the week before, so we're having a conversation about New York, and it's just like, yeah. Brilliant, brilliant, bloke. brilliant fella, brilliant fella, yeah. and it's great, great news. Whether whether he can play again this season, I don't know, but it's just brilliant news because that would have been a horrific way to end his Everton career. Mm. Not that it should have ended his Everton career anyway. I don't think. I think he should have been, he should have been given a contract no matter what, even if it was a sympathy thing mm. or what they'd work something out so that you know because he obviously he when if you play a coach, well you you have to do your there's a there's a. You have to do your rehab anyway. Mm. That's in your contract. Right. If, if you get injured and your contract finishes, that club is obliged. So he would have been there every single day regardless um, yeah. doing his rehab. So I remember seeing Dan Gosling the day before he moved new- to Newcastle in Finch Farm doing all his rehab because he had an injury at the time. And it's something they had to do anyway. So let's hope, let's hope that um, it's not too serious. Mm-hmm. Because we remember, remember when Awobi got injured at Man United and we all thought he was out and he was back the week after. So, I mean, the who thing knows? that happened in the ground, though, was to a man and woman, you think he doesn't stay down. Yeah. Yeah. You that, know, yeah. and then, of course, as soon as players go over and they start doing it, come on, hurry up, hurry up. And all the physios or whatever they're called these days are running on the pitch and then the stretcher comes and so mm-hmm. on. And then he does a bloody fist pump and says, go on, lads. And, but to be honest, you know what's funny about that? I was more worried about that because I was like, I said, gas in air, or was the adrenaline took over? Or, you know, because <laughs> no, when you get if you get hurt, but you're not seriously hurt, you, you're like, oh, you know, when you stand on a piece of Lego or something, you know, you're like, oh. But he was like, almost like the adrenaline took over, or the gas in air had been given to him when he was in a different planet. But um, no, I'm just. I mate. think that's just how much he loves the club, mate. He I think is. he, oh, he, he, he just proves that he puts the club before himself. He does. No, he genuinely, uh, genuinely like. Honestly, genuinely loves the football club. He's just, he's, he's, you know, you know, there's like, you have categories for players and you don't like to say, oh, someone's a legend if they haven't won something or, or, you know, that way gets bandied about quite a lot. Oh, he's a club legend and all this kind of thing. But you know what, Seamus, for someone who hasn't actually won something, is a club legend mm-hmm. because he had an opportunity to lead to go to Manchester United. He didn't go. 
Um, and he always puts the club before everything else, always. And I know he's a bit like that with his country as well. And I, it has annoyed me at times that he still plays for his country, but it is almost. But it's the same thing, isn't it? It's mm-hmm. the same thing. It's there's a duty. Sure there's a duty. There's a he sees it as a duty. So yeah. absolutely amazing fella. He's a do the well, right thing person. That's about the only thing I can be positive about at the minute. So I thought I'd, uh, I'd start off on a high and yeah, go downhill yeah. from there. Go on. Um, <laughs> Well, one was for Baz. Yeah. Um, it was. I watched the overlap earlier that oh, he yeah. was on. I thought, I thought he was great. Yeah, he was. But one thing he said, he made out like the board not being at the game mm. was a bad thing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But the, I mean, the letter that was sent out, the open letter to the board said, mm. you're not welcome because I'm yeah, back. Yeah. And that made me cringe a little bit that when I read it because I was like... Can we stop them? It's the, it's literally their yeah. club. No, it's not. Like, it's ours. Well, all right, so all right. I misspoke. You're on my line. They they own the share. They've got the shares. They've got the, the board. Money, only the one power. of them's got shares, and John, he's got one point three percent. John's got nearly as many shares as he has. Yeah. And and John can go the game, and yeah. nobody can tell John not to go the game. Yeah. So it was. It made me cringe a little bit that it was like, why are we why are we putting that out there? Let's stick to the message. That's we can't control that. Mm. But then to to put that out in an open letter, but then also to pick them up for not turning up, to me it sort of dilutes the message a little bit. Mm. It's like pick what you want. Like uh, you've got what you wanted, yeah. so let's let's stick to the stick to the message and just be relentless. Yeah. Let's not nitpick on little things and try and score as many points as we can, because I I can't stand this board. Mm. I think I think that people on this board are the worst thing that have, have ever happened to this club. Yeah, and I, th- I don't. I don't want to see that message. No, get no. Diluted well, by people being able to pick at it and say, "Well, you got what you wanted, one, and you still right. weren't happy." Before I turn this over to John, because I think this is a John John question as well. I think I think um, from Baz's point of view, though, I, I mean, he's not. Don't get me wrong; he's completely behind what everyone's doing, but he's not like yeah. me. He's not. I I am. You know, That's why it works. I'm, Can you imagine I'm, two I'm, I'm, on the same channel? I'm mili- <laughs> like you know, you know what I mean. I'm 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 militant. You know what I mean. I am I am there. I'm I'm I've definitely I've just I'm a bit French. There's definitely a bit of French there going on. I'm I'm I but but to be fair to Baz, when you and when you are in a scenario, you've got to sort of when you when you're in those positions and you you know you got to think on your feet as well. None of these things are pre-planned. I mean, John play, John will tell you right now. There's not a scrap of paper in this studio with a, with anything on with anything on telling anyone what to say. We just say everything we say is is as you can tell is genuinely off the cuff. So when sometimes you will say things and then you and then it, it people will analyze that afterwards and go, oh, is that on message? But to be fair to Baz, Baz is not on anyone else's message. I think I, I wasn't having a go. No, no, you mean no, no. Yeah, I'm just, I've I'm just. It's like sort of having a go. Listen, mate, people still people still have a go at me for what I said on Sky about winning the transfer window. I mean, there's literally <laughs> I'm live on Sky and someone shoves a mic under me and I'm dead excited and I know Sam Allardyce is literally there watching me and I'm trying to throw as many jabs as I can and you say things and then you know if you change one word and that everyone will go oh, that's amazing and you get things wrong I don't think he got it yeah. wrong I just think that what he was just trying to illustrate is is that we're all there fighting and they're not but that's on them that's on them they they created the scenario where that not to be at the game and they didn't have to be, they should be there they should be they should have been shown Dice's first game but they can't be there because of what they said it's as simple as that mm. they decided that um you know they they couldn't be at games of football they decided that you know um that's on them that's on i'd rather six month year old babies will be at the game rather than them but that you know that's just the way it is but job what's your thoughts on it what about dogs with christmas hats yeah, uh, my view on it is, and and I, for my sins, I've not watched the overlap yet, so I don't know, I don't know what the context was, but playing back what you just said at the at, at the at the end of your little speech there, um, they should be there, okay, and and it's of their own making that they're not, and and the, one of the things that really peeves me mm-hmm. is that this board of directors for for all their sins, if you will, since the beginning of the year, forget performance related things but everything Mm. from Southampton onwards is they managed to convince themselves in front of our biggest enemies that they're safer at Anfield than they are at Goodison Mm. and and that was completely and utterly a lack of understanding of the messages that they're sending yeah Mm. and now they can't come back um you know clearly 
nobody, and I've told this to people, no one would tell me not to go the game. Mm. And, and I think there's a load of confusion because the club keeps repeating a message that says they've been told not to come for safety reasons. No, they've mm. been advised not to come. They personally and individually, and I guess collectively, have chosen not to come. Now, notwithstanding that, um, I think Bill Kenwright has been to most, if not all, of the away games. And for most of them, probably just the ones where we've seen all of them, he's gone on his own. Because out of all of them, he's, I guess, the proper Evertonian on that board. Yeah. Mm. Um, so, so, but I do agree with you, by the way, that if you're going to have a, a fan message, if the message is, where are you? You should be here. That should be the, the consistent message. Mm. And if the message is, you're not wanted, stay away. That's also the consistent message. But of course, most of us fans, we see statements like that when everyone else sees them. So, the, it, you know, it, and, and, and with, Ped on this and Baz would support it as well and I can when I've been on Sky yeah. you know you, you get told you're going to talk about ABC and then they ask you about Z you know um, that um, when that statement was written by the guys who wrote it it seemed the right thing at the time you know and and, and it probably touched the spot for a majority of the fans therefore in that sense it was okay yeah, I, I, I love stuff like that personally well, of course like, you do I know you're an agitator that's, that's yeah. just for me yeah. I just love it I, I see I they you can't please all the people all the no, time. No, you can't. That's and, the, and that, that's, that's certainly the, that's the dealt point, with the, isn't it, John? You're yeah, the right. majority. Does, does it, yeah. The, whether it's a majority, I have a. I see. I have a gripe, right? And I, I don't mind saying because I don't mind saying anything. I have a gripe with fans who say you don't talk for me, and yet don't create a mm. platform or don't yeah, put yeah. their time into doing what you've done with the shareholders or whether you agree with the fab or the fans forum or they're all any, volunteers or any of the groups that volunteer or yeah. people give their time i don't agree with anyone just going on going on whatever twitter or whatever and going you don't talk for me and it's like well mate come here and sit here then and mm. tell me what you think that's what annoys me. So when people put out things going, you're not welcome, and they go, well, who are you to tell them? It's like, well, mate, come and, come and, come and join them. It's That's like, right, yeah. It's like when we did the call a few weeks ago with the um, the All Together Now group, and I spoke on it, and at the end of it, I said, if you don't agree with anything we've said, please come and join and give us an alternative Absolutely. point of view. Because we don't want to all sit, we're not... I, I'm firmly in the belief now that surely 90% of Evertonians want rid of the people who are, who are at the club. But maybe there's a portion of them who don't agree with the way the people who are currently doing it want to do it. And that's fine. But come and join them. Come and join. Don't just sit there and shrug and go, well, this is uh, we don't like what you're saying. Come and tell us then. But come. you're right there. And, but, uh, but a natural build upon that is the Fan Advisory Board, clearly in their statement didn't call out Graham Sharp, didn't yeah. call out Grant Ingalls, didn't call out Denise Barrett baxendale They put it all on the chair. Yeah. So they are representative of the fans and they have a view. And what's interesting, because I think that was written a well-constructed mm. communication, whether you agree with it or not, yeah. right? It was well-constructed. And so technically it was a better um, open letter, if you want to call it that, than the one from the, from the campaign. And the campaign people got a bit of stick around, like you say, you know, you don't speak for me and all that sort of stuff. But the fab one, all the comments I saw was universally supportive. So yeah. I don't know whether that says that the wider fan base, to pick you on what you just said, actually think it's all Ken Wright's fault and he's the one that has to go. And that there are chances for the other board members to, to ride this out. I'll join you, Mr. Activist, and say, I think all of them, yeah, the all of them have to go. Yeah, oh yeah, it's all. Up. I mean, sorry about the pause. It's just that Ned thought I should yeah, yeah. hear my own voice. So. Um, no, it's, I think he's the common on, denominator, isn't he? I think that's the that's the thing. Well, the chair like, is it, the book should stop with the chair. The last twenty years. Yeah, yeah it's when you looking at the last twenty years, who's been there the entire time? Yeah, that's. And I think that's what people are, are sort of focusing on now more than more than anything. But I think there's enough blame to go around more than just one person. Well, we've got a, a chief exec who's been on the board for more than ten years. Yeah. You know, Grant Tingles yeah. is probably the biggest victim because he's just there to make the numbers up in some <laughs> respects, you know, and, and that's not being flippant. You know, when Rizansev left, they had to have a third executive yeah, board yeah. member and, and Grant got the gig. Graham is an icon and, and, and it's sad. You, took, you talked previously about Seamus being a legend, but if you're, the, you know, the highest post-war goal scorer, then you deserve a small L in legend, if nothing yeah, else. And, and and all that's happening to the poor man is it's been eroded away because of, you know, ye shall not come the game. 
Operation Human Shield, that one for me. Yeah. You know, to try yeah. and mollify people and it's yeah. it's backfired and cost Sharpie, which is very really sad. Yeah. But the others on the uh, other side of the thing, Bill Sharpie, as well though. Yeah. Bill is, you know, whatever you think about Bill Ken like though, some people like him, some people don't like him. Some people like him because they don't they know him and he's done he does loads of things. I you know, he's done loads of things behind the scenes to try and help Evertonians and help people in the general football. Make things happen. Yeah. You know, that that's 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 clear. But at the same time, you know, he's seventy-seven. He, he, what? See, what I didn't understand about ageism. when people criticised, it's not ageism, because the presence of the United States is older. But you know, he's he seems far less like, lucid than Bill. Maybe, <laughs> maybe you might be right. But but one is one is. But I know one thing: if 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 um, the president of the United States had actively come out seven, eight years ago and said, I've got a serious illness, he wouldn't be the president of the United States. That's as simple true. as yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, Bill yeah. Kenwright said he was ill. And the fan says, you're ill and you're 77. You don't. You shouldn't really be front running Premier League club. And then people went, oh, you can't say that. And it's like, well, you can't say that. Because do you, put it this way, John, if Everton were publicly traded the company. No. He, would, do you, he wouldn't be in a job, would he? He might be in a job, but he wouldn't be the chair. Yeah. Yeah. Because, because simple fact, he's he the people that go no 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 mate, you're not looking after my money. I think it'd be more to do with it's not good for you to have all the stresses and the strains whilst fighting, yeah. you know, absolutely challenging medical yeah. conditions yeah. and stuff. That's it, yeah. yeah. Go on, Listen, Tom. fellas, I can see this. I can see this people waiting. So I'm Is going there? to uh, I'll okay. go on and and whinge all day. Call again, one. mate. Cheers, Tom. Um, I'll catch you next Thanks, time. Thanks, mate. Make sure there. you give us a call. Nice Cheers, one, mate. mate. Good Great points. Cheers, fellas. Um, two things. A lot, of, two things. lot of people in the comments are saying, why aren't you reading my comments out? Because it's a phone-in. It's a phone-in. <laughs> That's why. Listen, I'm not I'm not Baz. I'm not the cu cute... Cu Ned, why can I hear cartoon music in my ears? <laughs> well, then, to mute them, then. Chris might be the second best guitarist in the world. You're third. But I don't want to hear. Oh, right you're being re is he being relegated to right. third? Relegate to Chris is much wow. better. So number one, I am not the housewives' favourites. I'm not the cute and cuddly one. Like I don't look like Rocket Raccoon from Guardians of the Galaxy with my George Clooney salt and pepper haircut. Sorry, sorry. This is a phoning. It's not a commenting. So if you <laughs> want to get on, give us a call. That's the point. That's the point. <laughs> if you take five seconds to put a comment in, you can take ten seconds to give us a four. Other thing Ned wants me to say is that. In the comments, there's a link to buy this T-shirt, which says Everton are magic. It strictly might be true, but I don't care. Buy a T-shirt so I can I can afford food. Thanks. Chris. I thought you were looking skinny. Oh, fucking no. <laughs> I wish I was. Right, great. To be fair, I didn't actually know that um, you don't hear the microphone while I was still playing guitar. So I was a bit like, Chris, yeah, that caught me off guard a bit. No, no, Chris, this is not your fault. This is, this is handler error. This is not your fault, mate. <laughs> Operator error. This, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is the guy sitting over there. I wanted guess. to know what he was playing. No, worse, right? No, much worse. There's so all, we get him drowning off. There's all kinds of equipment in this room, right? Very expensive yeah. equipment, equipment. He's got a pair of Aer Lingus headphones in <laughs> that he got off the plane when we went to America. <laughs> there's, really. there's gear everywhere. <laughs> There's like all the fancy gear everywhere. Eh, Lingus headphones. That's just incredible. It and is, and he's got the whitest wobbly yeah. legs. And he's also got shorts on. That's he's what I mean. Got a Lingus underwear on as well. No one him. Go on, Chris. Oh Go God. on, Chris. Apparently all his clothes are in the wash, he told us yesterday. So to, to be honest, like, I'm, admittedly, I, I missed like the first half of the... Where are you, the, Chris, um, anyway? Chat, tell us but... where you are, mate. We're he's trying in, to get it into... Nottingham? Oh, Nottingham. He's in oh, the, he's yeah. Commiserations. He goes yeah. to the second best hooters in the country. Whoa. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't. Because um, uh, they only do, they don't really... They only do chicken and they don't have anything I can eat, but... The, uh, best, one, the best one's in <laughs> D.C., isn't it? <laughs> I, I wouldn't know, John. I was sick in bed. All I know is that the, the Hooters in, in Washington has got a bit on the floor where Ned fell asleep in the toilet. <laughs> it's true. True facts. We have to photograph the kids. We've just... got a new, so we've got a new intern called Gemma, and honest to God, she spent most of the day just learning all the Ned stories. And, and, and I'll yeah. be honest, she's got a look in her eye of like, mm, this might have been the best idea, or this might have been the greatest idea. I don't know what. It's which, probably the greatest. Idea. I think so. <laughs> you I, don't. You don't learn this in master's degree lectures, no, do you? Absolutely. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, Go yeah. on, Chris. <laughs> um, it's usually one of my usual depressing rants, to be honest. Oh, um, go on. Depress go on. away. Yeah, because 
Yeah, go on. Because the problem, the problem I've got is it just feels like even let's say whether we stay up or whether we get relegated, right? I don't really feel any optimism that next season is going to change mm. because regardless of who the club signs, because I don't really trust at, at the moment this club to sign the players that we need mm. to actually make sure that we don't find ourselves in the same situation again next year as well. And if we go down, do I trust them to get the right players in in that situation? Not necessarily. Do I think we there's enough quality in the squad currently to get us up? Yes, but we still have the same um, guy who runs this club. Pedge, you said it best like, like a week or so ago. I think you described Bill Kenroy as a useful idiot because that is actually the best way to describe Bill Kenroy at the moment. He seems to be fronting a lot of the blame because whereas for me, like so much more of this needs to fall on our owner. Mm. I do not trust our owner to ever guide this club to where it needs to be at all. Above all else, he's the man that for me needs ejecting from this football club. Like uh, When you look at the fact that he's overall bought, like directors of football, we've had what, three under him now, I think? Yeah, is it yeah. three? Yeah, three, yeah. yeah. We're on number yeah. three yeah. now. Yeah. We're, Allegedly, we have on one them. at the moment, yeah. <laughs> well, apparently, so yeah. yeah. Like, what does he do? Does he bring him tea or coffee? Does know. he help yeah. sign the players? What does he do? Like, I, I, I don't know. Like, it just it feels like if if he is if we've got an owner that's going to overwrite the director of football anyway, and he's going to have his hands in like the transfer, even though he's like gone on a, on a statement saying, "Oh, I've never suggested players," and it's already been proven that he's well, basically effectively lied. Then it's an untruth. It's an untruth. I, I, no, it's not. The non truth. No, it's not. Go on then, what is it? There's a subtle difference between Go on. Well you you heard me say this before, right? <laughs> you said on truth. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna No, I didn't. I shut my head when you said on truth, <laughs> right? Um there, there's lots of people out there who, who express an opinion okay. but present it as if it's a fact. Okay. Often they're yeah. often they're journalists, right? Um <clears throat> and the underlying thing, which we all have to try and remember, not with, by the way, I do agree that the the, uh, the owner interferes, right? Mm. But it's a football club who signs contracts with players. It's the football club who signs contracts with construction companies. It's the football club who signs contracts with agents. Yeah. And at best, all Farhad Mashiri can do legally is influence, right? Now, the okay. reality is, of course, if you own 94 point something percent of the stock, a lot of if I suggest, and I'm, that's me, and I suggest to you that you buy a particular player and you don't, then his recourse is to dismiss, yeah? Um, so mm -hmm. fundamentally, the board have allowed themselves to become agents of his whim, right? And therefore, I think it, and I used to say this in Everton Business Matters, every time we, I'm not, I'm not saying he's blameless, and by the way, he probably is the greatest influence in the mess that we're in, certainly since he's turned up, yeah? But every time we say, Mashiri's the problem, we're letting off the hook, the chair, the chief exec, mm. and the finance director because they are executive officers of the business yeah. and they should be acting in the best interests of all shareholders. Now, what I've just said is utterly naive because it's easier said than done, but plenty of moral people walk away when they're not allowed to do their job. And these people have chose to stick around, right? So, and that's why they're all culpable. Mm. The, the board mm. have failed to control the owner and the owner has made some appalling decisions based on who he listens to. And, and it's interesting that we have a, 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 a fan base who probably have very little confidence in the board of directors, and yet we criticise the owner for listening to other people. Yeah. Yeah. So he listens to advisors and agents and his mate down the chip shop who thinks he's Elvis or whoever it might be. Um, and maybe that's just an indirect way of him expressing his lack of confidence in the board, and yet he's not removed them. So it's a bit of a, a huge conundrum, isn't it? Mm. That's kind of also the other point I'm making because it's all because yeah, there's a lot of pressure on the board. And I agree, the board the board isn't fit for purpose, but then to a certain degree, it's almost letting the owner off the hook as well. That was oh, it's mutual, because... absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So the thing that's the other point. Like, let's say this board changes next season. Why? Well, but like, do I realistically think the entire board will change next season? I I don't know. But it's still the same guy who's running the club appointing the next board as well. So how can we be sure that, considering how everything has happened so far, that he's actually going to appoint the right people to actually take this club forward? Because from what I've seen so far, I don't have the confidence that our owner is actually going to do that. Well, it, well, it's interesting because Farhad Mashiri didn't appoint any of these board members. Mm. They were all there before him, right? Uh, True. Denise Barrett Baxendale logically appointed Graeme Sharp. She logically appointed Grant Ingalls. And Bill obviously gave the chief exec's job to Denise when um, 
when, when Robert Elston left. Um, the people who, who Farhad put on the board, you know, one assaulted someone, so I had to go anyway, which was Usmanov's nephew. And Ryzan Sev stuck around for a couple of years and didn't do what he was brought in to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and then you're into, the, 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 if you like, the sporting decisions around players, managers and directors of football. And in all those cases, the board of directors could, in my view, and I know that if they were here now, they'd say easier said than done, John, right? But they could, in my view, have influenced the outcomes. They really could. They should have stopped Benitez being appointed. Prior to that, they could and perhaps should have, you know, um, stopped Allardyce being appointed. And the erosion of confidence in the fan base, you, you could point to both those appointments being the straws, if you like, that broke the camel's back after the, the you know, the litany of bloody different managers and directors of football that we had. Mm. Uh, but many of the other decisions around Koeman uh, and Ancelotti and Walsh and Brands, in the moment, very few of the fans thought they were the wrong decisions. So it's a mess. Yeah, yeah, it, it really is. That's because like, I've just got a better understanding of how everything is now that you've explained it. To be fair, so it, it, it's one of those things where just going into the next year it still doesn't necessarily fill me with a massive. It's, it doesn't necessarily fill me with any confidence that we could, that we're not going to be in the same situation next year, whether we're in the Premier League or not. So, I, sorry, mate. I think I think your core message is spot on. That you don't trust. Yeah. <laughs> if if this board gets wiped out, you don't trust this owner to replace yeah, them yeah. with better people. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That that's yeah. that is hundred percent my main concern. Yeah, and I think um, I think you you find very few people to disagree with you on that one. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because the thing is, even with like the manager we've got, like, do I think Sean Dyche is a good manager? Yes. Is it does his constant insist on playing Michael Keane and Fury? Mate, absolutely. In fact, I disagreed with your player rating on that. Bad for me, it was a one. If a <laughs> if a player deserves a ten for getting getting a hat trick in a game, yeah, it's the same if you're at fault for three goals. Yeah, yeah. Like to a, be a fair, you can see it. To be fair, though, Chris, <laughs> I did give him a point for each boot that he tied. <laughs> oh, did you give two? Did oh, you? Oh, that's really sweet. I, I give him three. <laughs> the other it. one was for get find his way to the pitch. <laughs> yeah, it, it's one of those things where it kind of like when like on the whole mar manager merry go round thing. If like Sean Dice doesn't keep his job next year, I don't know. Like, oh, there's no way I could be able to answer to you or what because no matter who comes in, they've still got to deal with the same situation basically. So it just feels like it's just gonna go around in circles. So does hopefully like more than anything because like we need the art like next next year whatever whatever happens something has to fundamentally change in the either the ownership model board level something has to happen do i see it and is the thing is do i necessarily have the confidence that it will change i think i think that's a good really good point and i, I think there's a general expectation that those changes will happen and then the scare, the scaremongering statement is, but will the new people be any better than the ones we already have? Yeah, and we won't Especially know. Especially if, like, sorry, we sorry, won't mate, carry on. We, we won't know until we hear their names and, and whether they've got track records or not, and and, and so on. So yeah. And it's also important, like as well, like is our as well is the owner going to actually just going to leave them to it and let them get on with their job as well, because from the previous like reports that we've heard from like um marcel brands and stuff like he he was interfering in ways where he shouldn't necessarily have been but i i, I um, think like, um, yeah i don't think the owner's been interfering in the sporting side for quite a while yeah it, hopefully if that's the case then may, that maybe he's learned he's learned something from previous mistakes and yeah. maybe that's a positive we can hold on to i think we just ran out of money so we can't interfere with <laughs> with, with transfers because we haven't been buying anybody mm. yeah um, yeah true but, but clearly he would have had the greatest influence on Deitch, I think. Um, I suspect Bill might have liked him as well. Just, uh, you know. Yeah. With yeah. Mind a, mind a manager's mind. manager. You know, he would remind him of Moyes, won't he? Yeah, it would have reminded him of Moyes, yeah. Yeah, yeah a little bit. Yeah, it kind of does, I think. Cause I do like Deitch for, like, for the most part. I do think... I, I, like most in terms of the attacking play, I've seen some good stuff from him. There's also the like there is again also stuff which he does which infuriates me. Like there is a lot of there is a lot of long ball which is starting to irritate me a little bit. But then again, then again, we've got Dominic Carvalho in up front, so <laughs> yeah, and and not a lot of good plays as well. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, it'd be interest. It'd be interesting to see how they, they recruit for him because it'll be I. I 
it'd be interesting to see what he what if he's given like a decent transfer budget how he actually builds a team to his image mm. um because personally the team looks so much better with the three in the midfield it looks like night and day better i know he, like he spoke a lot about yardages and like when he set up the 442 in terms of how players can like drop into certain positions to like give you the numerical advantage again but just when you set up naturally as like what was he was doing like a four five one or four one four one or whatever it just looked it it instantly just looked better because we just had so much better control of the zone mm. do, you, do you know what i'd like to know what the relationship yeah. is between the manager and the director of football because yes. I because I suspect that the relationship we think they should have is actually the relationship that the director the uh, the manager has with the chair. The, fre- yeah. the frequency of talking to each other, the sounding board stuff, all of the above, right? And, and I think Thelwell needs to stick his head above the parapet. To be honest, because if anybody is supposed to do from a sporting perspective all the, the things you quite rightly call out need to be done, he's the man who should be the architect mm. of it. Yeah. And I, and I mm. suspect if we are in a place where we think, and you just use the phrase, um, build a team in his own image, due respect, I do not want Everton to be a team in the image of Sean Dyche. No. Because he isn't, yeah. whatever happens, he isn't going to survive necessarily for the full term of his contract. Because if we get up to the Premier League, we get established again, they'll go back to means to an end. We've done that. Now let's get a young progressive manager. But if by then, Deitch has got rid of Branthwaite and he's got rid of Anana and he's got rid of anyone else who's young because he doesn't trust in young players, yeah, um, Patterson and, and what have you, yeah then we're back where we started again of the legacy of Cooman becomes the legacy of Ancelotti becomes the legacy of Benitez's pillaging and, yeah. and so on. The di- if we're going to have the director of football, let him do the goddamn job and let him come out and tell us a lot what it is he's going to do. Hmm. We need we need a reset, don't we? But yeah, absolutely. Very difficult. I know people, go, that's where people go, oh, relegation could give us a reset. You can have a reset. Anytime. Anytime, as long as you're prepared to do yeah. it, as long as you have a plan and you know what you're you're trying to do, you can have a reset anytime you want. The hard part, right? And you, sorry, I'm going to use one of my cliches, my oh, well. scuba diving <laughs> one of you know, plan the dive, dive the plan. Okay, our goalkeeper in the last game had a piece of information yeah. that told him, if you've got the bottle, stand still and you'll save this penalty. Mm. It'd be so easy for this keeper to have dived left or dive right. No one would have thought ill of him. Mm. It would also had the, the penalty taker just slotted it left or right. Mm-hmm. He'd have looked a fool. Yeah. But his stats said this guy hit it down the middle 60% of the time. So he stood there and he saved it. Yeah. And that could be what keeps us in the division. Yeah. yeah. Com- compared to the pressure he had in the few seconds that Madison was stepping up to take it, what the director of football and the board of directors got to do is trivial because they can do it in the calm light of day mm. when there's no pressure, when there's no screaming fans and so on. And if their plan isn't 90 percent form right now, then they're negligent mm. because mm. what else are they doing? Yeah. You know, they should be preparing for next season and leaving Sean Dice to get on with this season. Yeah, Sorry, absolutely. rant over. There absolutely. No, absolutely. It's a really good point. That's not a rant, Joe. I'll show you a rant. Oh, someone <laughs> asked a question, so Ped can rant. Go on, no, Ped. I'm not honestly over that. No. No. Uh, Chris, nice one, mate, as ever. Has anyone bought t shirts? So, nice one. Speak to you soon. Cheers, mate. That Thank you. Speak good good questions, yeah, lad. Good question. Um, okay, just a couple of. Has anyone bought t shirts? I, I, I won't know. I couldn't tell you. I could check. I just phone. want to know whether you're the best um, salesperson Toffee TV could yeah. have. What we should do is actually, we should do a thing where we maybe now do this next week where if someone buys, we'll give a discount code out while the show's on. Oh, and just applies and for the duration someone, of the show. Yeah, and if someone oh. buys t shirts during the show. That's why he's the creative director, people. So we'll do that next week. Um, can't we do it tomorrow? We haven't got a live show tomorrow, though. Why? Because we don't do live because this because we do don't we pre- do them every Toffee day TV on prem yeah but that's Toffee TV premier they get discounts anyway they get tw- oh if I you're see Toffee TV premier you get twenty five percent off t shirts and hoodies and everything else oh better change that then uh, <laughs> um just a co- no a couple of things just I've noticed in the comments there someone saying they don't agree with people mentioning Bill Kenwright's age and they're saying well he's not senile or or a did an old fool well that's fine he's not an old fool he's quite true but I, I think he is 77 
But you keep mentioning age. I know because because I think it's important, and I'm not being ageist. But you are. But I think you, you are. No, I'm Every not. Every time you say he's seventy-seven, guess what? Seventy-seven is old, right? It is. It just is. How old are you? Forty-four. Right. So right, I, and I already feel knackered. Right. So, so the gap between me and you is almost no, no, the size of the gap between the me and Bill. Though, the point is, though, John, Back 77. How old are you? 20. 20? Yeah. The gap between you and him yeah. is even bigger. Yeah. But the point He's seen how I am. where you're sitting. But, and I haven't said he's seen how, but the point is, <laughs> no, you are, 77 <laughs> to run off Premier, to help. No help, age. Help. It is an age. We, we, you know what, right? You can sit, people can sit around and discuss things like they don't matter, but they do. Being 77... And I'm helping run a Premier League football club is, and also it's not seventh. Like I've already explained. Stop digging. I'm not digging. I don't mind. I don't, John, you know me. You're I, crystal clear that you're ageist. I, I sound <laughs> it's ageist. clear as day. I'm ageist. Then I'm ageist. I've got no issue being ageist. By the way. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Dude. Being 77. Now we know you're a big. I'm running you a Premier on. League yeah. for helping because he doesn't run. Helping running is a worry to me because he is ill. So therefore, how you know? My biggest problem with Bill Ken right, is. In terms of, and I have, how switched on is he to how he, that letter he wrote last week. Wasn't te- great. Tells me that he is not switched on to modern football and how Everton fans feel. It ju- He just isn't. And that part of that is, of course, he, he isn't going to sit around all day. He, looking at what's going on, he, he, he has comms people, comms people that I don't think are good enough. So he relies on information and, for me, he should be sitting with his feet up, be, you know, on a on a beach. That and whether people think that's age stone, I couldn't care less. Cause I I don't think he's up for the job, and I think a large part of that is because he's run out of energy. The energy of energy that it takes to run. I think a you need to be careful, Go generally, right? Between saying someone which people can agree with easily mm. that you don't think they're good enough, you mm. don't think they're up to it. If you drift into personal matters like. Um, health and stuff well, does, Hang on, bear with me on, John. yeah Fair then fight. the health is then whether the health challenges that he may have impair his ability to do the job yeah right because that then they become valid if, if they do yeah mm. and the last one the age thing is complete and utter bullshit you can't make observations about people's competence simply based on how old they are i can't I yeah. think I can. That's right. No, I th- I honestly think I can. That's fine because you're ageist. Because I'm ageist. Yeah, yeah. No, I've got no issue. I'm yeah. ageist. Yeah. I just don't think a 77 year old man should be helping run a So you don't club. know anybody who's 40 who behaves like they're 80? Yeah, no, it's me. Okay. So therefore, there's 80 year olds who behave like they're 40? Yeah. No, it's not about how. It's not about. I'm not. It's not a thing of. I'm 44. I act like I'm 17 most of the time. It's not about how he acts. That's it. He's immature and naive. About, Got it. It's about <laughs> it's about your general fitness to yeah. Don't get me wrong, but none of that's due to age. Of course it is. No, I'm it's joking. not. I know. I know. I know. Like we're all getting older, but you've got. There's got to be reality attached to things. There's got to be. If you're seventy-seven and you're you've had bad health for the last. Eight, oh, sorry. Oh, just do the age one because I'm only attacking you on the age bit. All right. Forget yeah, but, all the no, other no, stuff. They go hand in hand. No, they don't. They do. Okay. <laughs> all right. Okay. Dead, dead simple thing, right? If you're 77 and you get a cold, and I'm 44 and I get a cold, who's more likely to be in a very bad way because of it? Um, if you're morbidly obese, <laughs> no, and no, I'm... No, you're changing it. No, I'm not. You're changing it. Mate, okay, I... Okay, okay, that's fine. I could... Very quick. Are you saying fat people can't run football? Clubs? Just, you're fattest. No, you're, you're not ta- fattest. talking about a cold, right? I, I'm pretty damn sure right. that I can go and find an 80-year-old who'd leave you for dead in a 10K run. No, they wouldn't. I'm they going just a- wouldn't. They just wouldn't. Go and have a look. They just wouldn't. No, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. There are 80-year-olds who can run 10Ks. 100%. Faster than you. No, I'm not having that. No, I'm just not having it. I'm quite, I'm quite fast. Young lady, please look up on t- internet what the record is for 10k by an 80 year well, that's old. One person. We only that's, need one to disprove the, the shit you're that, talking. No, you don't. <laughs> you do. <laughs> you're saying that's the great, that's the greatest 80 year old 10k runner. We're looking at. I'm looking at Bill Kenwright's track record of being an owner. I don't have an issue oh. with his track record. But I'm not being ageist. Just stop saying. You've told us you're ageist just already. To, just to, just to No, you, you've gone right. from I'm not ageist to I am ageist I'm not, to I'm not. I'm not ageist. Like. 
I'm not ageist. Stop mentioning the age thing. You keep no, all the no, other stuff. You've because it plays a part. Of course, it plays a part. No, it doesn't. Oh, it does, John. Because no, it doesn't. There's too much. There's very much. There's a. I understand where. Can you we come, have a poll? And it's all to do with I age. I understand where you're coming from. I do. I tell. Yeah, yeah. People now, as they're getting older, what I'm saying is, I would rather a 50 year old running Everton as a chairman than a 77 year old because generally they'd be in better health. Generally, be the switch more switched on to what's going on. In the in the world, because the world is moving at such a such a, a pace that is he is he switched on enough to understand the way the world is rather than the way the world he wants the world, and that's where age comes into it. Not I'm not talking about his health or ha- how he feels as such. It's more to do with does he understand football as it is right now rather than how how he wants it to be, and that has to be an age thing because does he keep up with everything? As as it's moving. Listen, if he does, then I'm an idiot, right? Simple as that. I sound like an idiot. Then you said it, mate. Yeah. Exactly. No, I, and I don't have any issue with that. I'm the one who looks an idiot. But in my my eyes, from my experience and looking at what Bill does on a general thing, I don't think he's as switched on to modern football. Give me an example. I can't. And oh, I you're said, talking no, no, shit, I then, aren't I you? can't. No, I can't because I've been told these things in confidence, so I can't say them. Well, I can't, can I? Someone with an agenda told you something that fits your was agenda. You? Was it? <laughs> well, you could, you don't break confidence. Exactly. I haven't broken. Give me an example. I, I can't give you an example. Cause Which you is give... purely to do with his age. Well, I know because he's 77. You keep going back no, to his 77. He is, that's three years away from being 80. Yeah. In any in any sort of normal... Right. In normal would you have him on a building site? 77. Why? But what would you have him on a building site? No. So, so what's the difference? What do you mean? What's the well, difference? Would you have him on a building site? There's, there's seventy-seven. Your age is. You wouldn't let a seventy-seven-year-old on no, a building. Hang on a second. Go on. There's seventy-seven-year-olds yeah. operating on people. I don't want a seventy-seven-year-old operating That's on because me. Because you're ageist. I am ageist because I believe, right? Genuinely... Are you sexist as well? No, I'm not sexist because Why? that's a completely different thing. All right. No, that's a, it is right. This is. So genuine... Why aren't there more women on building sites? I don't know. I've not been on a building site recently. Well, I do you know there aren't 77-year-olds on a building site. Because I, I think I know there's not 77-year-olds on a building site. Well, why aren't they 77? Why aren't 77-year-olds on Probably a building site? Probably because they don't want to be. No, because they can't physically compete. It's as simple as that. I'm not ages for saying that. That's real. That's just living in the real world. No. There's a difference between... You keep coming back to it's the age that's the problem. Yeah, it is. And it isn't. I fundamentally it's believe... The, it's the person that's the problem. But... But not the not their no, no, age. That's because I wouldn't. There's say a reason that ageism is illegal. I did start by saying there's a there's a the the presence of the United States is older than them, but his his general health and track record is better than Bill Kenwright. Bill Kenwright has been ill. Have you watched Biden? The difference is you you you're saying that the chairman's more lu- less lucid than Biden. The difference is John is that. Genuinely, presidents have lots of advisors that they actually ah, listen we're to. We're getting to it now. It's not to do with age. Did I not say this before? No. I did, didn't I? No, remember I said comms. No, we're talking I, about this context, right? No, remember when I said comms before and yeah. I said about having people around you yeah. that you listen to and you're oh, switched absolutely. on yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Biden is a man who has lots of people around. He still him. falls over on the stage. He though, does, he? But, but the difference is though, by just by the very nature of what he does, he has to go out and shake hands with people in the streets. Bill Kenwright will not shake hands with any Evertonian. He doesn't understand what's going on but, in the streets because he's cause. What? Okay, go on, go. On. No, that's cool. No, go on. that's cool. Go on. You right. Threw me under a bus. No, I haven't. You have. <laughs> okay, stay there. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but all that. Yeah. You were fine, personally, yeah. dealing with me yeah. and maybe the viewers. You're not 77. Hang on a second. Dealing with me and maybe the viewers, right? <laughs> Unless you, yeah. you just attribute it to age. Yeah. There are people out there who can be exactly the same as Bill Kenwright from a views point of view yeah, and yeah. opinions and all that sort of stuff, and they're 25. 100%. Most of them went to Eton and they think, you know, the world's lovely. Are you ageist stuff. against young people? No. Age, I'm, I'm about the t- selection of uh, educational systems. Where okay, if you pay fifty grand, you're yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know what I mean. So yeah. 
I think just the age thing. Oh, it's not just the age thing. Well, the age thing isn't a thing at all. But the rest of it, and I think that the nub of it really, because we're digging him out the hole now, right? Um, the, the nub of it is he hasn't got good people around him. Yeah, and that's what oh, I said Sorry, before. let's be on it. Sorry, get it right. Not enough good people or good enough yeah, yeah. people around him. Yeah, yeah. And then, because if, if you talk about um, whether the man is in the real world, to use that phrase, mm. is the chief exec in the real world? Uh, not that I'm aware of. And she's substantially younger. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, whatever, 30 years younger. Yeah, yeah. So that's not an age thing then, is it? No, no. Okay, cool. He's just really bad at a job. Yeah. But he's been really bad at his job for 25 years. Yeah, but just because he's 77... No, but, no, but it, won't, it won't improve with his age, will it? That's the point. No, if he's got a mindset that says, you know, everything's rose in the garden, we all need to be best of friends and let's not have any arguments. Yeah, yeah. Then if he was like that at 50 or 57, just but to make one it of his, 20 years and so one on. One of his issues is, one of his issues is, just before we finish, we're going to go to Mike now. One of his issues, I think, is is that he doesn't, he doesn't, because he's... And I'm not putting this on his age, but because he's of a because he's of a generation before this modern era of comms and being re being on Twitter and all that kind of thing, which mm. people can go, "Oh, that's all rubbish." It's just not though, because no, we live not. we live in a digital no, right. world. Well, we all comms, use these things, and he yeah. relies. He, yeah, and he will he relies <laughs> on people to. One of my things that I think one of Bill Kenwick's biggest fails is that he's not prepared to go and sit in a room with people who will question him. And mm. and and quite and, possibly, and yeah. you, you've you've mentioned this yourself with different things. Is he, he so? Therefore, he relies on those comms, and those comms tell him exactly what he wants to hear a lot of the time. Do you, do you know what's interesting? Because because I've obviously spoken to him many times, right? Mm. Oh, quite often, either in groups or one to one, and he always listens. Yeah. And 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 it you know it's part of what seems I, mean, you, you, I might be able to produce an example which isn't Bill but you can mm. recognise right how often I'll turn it into a question how often have you dealt with someone at the club and thought when the meeting had finished they got what you were saying they were on side mm. they went back to the ranch yeah. and then it got flipped over um, probably ninety nine point nine percent right. of the time so what we're describing is. The culture back at the ranch yeah, yeah. is the issue. Yeah. Because and, and therefore we may have an environment where even good people can't perform. No, hundred percent. Unless they've got testicular fortitude to stand up to the people who are blocking or slowing things down or, or whatever it might be. And people like the chief exec may be victims of that. Yeah. The previous chief exec may be a victim of that. The previous mm. chief of exec, oh, they're the sorts yeah. of people who walked. Right. right. Yeah. Um so Anyway, we're back. We're off the age thing. We've got another question. I still don't think 77 year olds should be running football clubs, and if that makes me ageist, I don't care. There you go. <laughs> Who have we got, Ned? He is ageist. <laughs> Who We've is got this? Mike. Go on, Mike. Hey, you all right? Hiya, Mike. Okay? Yeah. Good to hear you last again, mate. Last week, I got the bit between me teeth. Oh, so I'm back. good man. I, uh, I do agree with you, Ped, on that last debate. You're going to upset, John. No, no, people, other views are available. <laughs> Apologies, John. I'll believe Mike more than I believe Ped anyway, any day of the week. <laughs> don't, don't, don't do that, definitely not. <laughs> um, I said last week I thought we were down. Mm. I think that was me trying to prepare myself. Mm, yeah. But after the uh, Newcastle game, and obviously the last game following it, me heart did sink a bit further. Yeah. Um, I, ju I just want to say as well, what an atmosphere on Thursday mm. night from the bus welcome that they don't deserve to the fireworks. <laughs> All of it, you'd have thought we were on the verge of winning the Champions League. Mm. I know. It's wasted on, well, it. it's wasted on them. Yeah, me, me question is, or one of them, how going forward this season do we um, recreate 
what we did atmosphere-wise in the last, well, probably the last the game away as well. John, can we re- can we recreate it? Um, so the last away game was Leicester, and the fans were right on it. Yeah, yeah. And I think we'll be right on it at Brighton. And Palace, Palace was brilliant. Yeah, we'll be right on it at Brighton, and we'll be right on it at Wolves as well. Mm. And it's and, and you know maybe being a bit naughty, but if if we could tenfold rep- replicate what goes on at away games in in a full Goodison Park, then both the City and the Bournemouth game are going to be so hot that maybe even the magnificent Man City may flake under the pressure. But hey ho, so yeah, I my, I think we can because our fans are magnificent. At the end of the day, um, I, I think the hard part is Goodison, yeah, um, because of course. The away fans are always just on it, but they're only a small percentage of what goes, well, a tenth, isn't it, of what goes on at Goodison Park. Um, and I think we just need to try and energise everybody and try and lift your heart and the heart of others that it's not a lost cause yet. And and maybe take advantage of the fact that the next game is away and get something out of that game to give people the confidence mm. to come out swinging against City. And, um, you know, we, we got a good result at the Etihad and uh, maybe another good result would just be not losing against City. So, fingers crossed and all that. Yeah, definitely. That was, that was my point, really, on the next, well, home and away game is whether you would have thought there'd be a drop-off in the... Fan from the fans just because we've been so poor. I, I don't think in the short term there'll be a drop off. I think if we had a really bad result at Brighton, I think that would put people on the back foot for City. And let's, you know, although people got criticised in the past for expected defeats, I think most of us would expect we're going to lose at home to City. And the pressure then on the, the last two games could be immense. Because actually the you know the results went the wrong way and, and we lost both those next two games we could actually be done and dusted at Wolves couldn't we mm. so so that becomes almost like a Palace game but it's away rather than at home so I think that's why it's important we get something out of Brighton to keep no. to keep confidence up no definitely um, and also I heard you mention before about if the uh... Bournemouth game was behind closed doors. There's, there's absolutely no way I wouldn't be going that game Good regardless. Mm. Even if I had to sit outside in my chair, <laughs> freezing me, you know what? It's in so. May. You won't be, be freezing. Be back at the end of May. You'd be laughing. Just well, <laughs> well, well it, it's still Liverpool, isn't it? You never know what you're getting. Yeah, that's true. But he is right, though. People would just be outside. Yeah. No, exactly. Yeah. No, that, there's no way. There's no way. What I would say is, if any, for that Bournemouth game, you can just imagine a, 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 a just a, the pitch side being completely covered in police and security oh, guards gosh, for the yeah. entire game. For, the, for when it finishes. For just any, but with any reason, I was saying the to goal Bajetti, scored, yeah. imagine if it was goal difference and we like it, like you, we. I don't know, like, we had to make sure they didn't score a number of goals. Fans would just run on and break the crossbar and get the game <laughs> called off. It was a 3-0 defeat or something. So, <laughs> so you, no, there's no way, is there? Let's just hope, let's just hope it, it does get to that, to that yeah, game. Yeah. And, because, uh, like you are saying there, Mike, it's, you've just got to give fans hope, haven't you? You've got to give Definitely. them hope. And I think I think the Leicester game, even though we didn't win in, that's a, that was a massive disappointment. I think the performance gave us all that little mm. bit of hope that we can go to Brighton and maybe grab something and and then Man City, we can make that. Because there's been a thing of like, well, we're playing Man City, so it's over. But you know when you think about it, Man City have got, they're playing West Ham tonight, they play Leeds, they play Real Madrid. We're in between the two Real Madrid games. Real Madrid games. Two we're Real in the middle of the two. Yeah, so they play two, we're in the middle. And you just think if we can make that game just a little bit nasty, Feisty. little bit uncomfortable, don't give them an easy day. And that starts with us as fans. We No one should go... No one should say, "Oh, that's that's done." Well, why? It was only one 0 last season. That was from a dodgy, um, you know, a dodgy decision that we never got. Uh, you know, I think they scored with five minutes to go, didn't mm. he? So let's if we can make it horrible at least and do our part, then 
give us a chance at least. Absolutely spot on. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I might need a favour. You might need to put some context to this next comment pad. Go on. If you, if you don't mind. Could you get a message to Sean Dice and say, I'll, uh, I'll play instead of Michael Keane? <laughs> I've seen you, you in your. I've seen you, you be in your careful, old gold cart, mate. You be careful because if he can get you registered, he, oh, he won't be able to, will he? No. He, he might have said, "Yeah, if he could get you registered." I've seen <laughs> you in your little gold cart. You're quick. <laughs> you're much quicker than Michael Keane. <laughs> so I mean, I might have a, num- a number of coordination yeah. you know, difficulties, but <laughs> I still reckon I could do a better job. <laughs> Mike, I'm, I'm not saying it. I've already been accused of being ages, mate. I'm not saying anything else. <laughs> no, say it. I, I just find it funny. Oh, no. He's not great, is he, mate? He's not great. Oh, no, it, it baffles me. He must have some dodgy photos or something. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe he knows where all the Burnley bodies are. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Legally, let's not say any more. Yes. No, no. <laughs> Definitely stop anyway, digging now. That, that, that's me, short and sweet. Nice one, yeah, Good man, thanks, can Mike. I just, can I just say one more thing? Go on, mate. These phone calls have gone much better than when I call up Bay Station. <laughs> so, thanks. Nice one, Mike. It's a bit of a different atmosphere as well. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'd say so. Nice yeah. one, Mike. See ya. Tell me. Cheers, Mike. There you go. Bye. There you go. What's your best 10K time then? Um, It's like 55 minutes. It's 15 minutes slower than the 80 year old. But it's one 80 year old. <laughs> see, I, see, I knew you were going to do that. And, I, and I don't, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me. <laughs> Ian says John is 63 and I would trust him to run the club I'm not more 63 than Pe- more than Pez and, ba- Pez and Baz yeah because John is actually really good at what he does and has a track record of being really good but when I'm 77 he'll say I'm not no I'm I, not won't. Seven- I won't I won't <laughs> if John is John is still as he is at 77 and why why wouldn't he be I'd then be I'd, 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 I wouldn't have any issue I said literally said when I started on my age about the, pr- the, the presence of America I'm not digging because to me, Bill Kern might have been t- bad for 25 years. Stop saying 77 then. No, no. Say all the other stuff. What I said was, <laughs> I, I, I said I wouldn't have a 77-year-old running my club who's got a track record like Bill Kern might. <laughs> I just wouldn't have a 77. I, do you know what? I just wouldn't have a 77. Might as well just be open and open and honest about it, Mike. Now. And thank you for saying I'm only 63. That's great. Thank 64 you. now with a birthday very yeah. recently. No, so. I'm 65 in November. Oh, yeah. Okay. It was recently, it wasn't that long. I mean, in the context of how long the world has existed, it's not that My long. My granddaughter's ago. sitting over there. <laughs> um, yeah, there you go. A lot of people don't like it when you talk about age. Why? It's just it isn't. It's a number. It's con. It's it's about where you, where your your head's. Well, start attribute. Stop attributing performance to how old people are. I then, <laughs> see, I didn't. But I did. But Look what, at her body language know, saying, you're talking crap now. Listen, I'm her boss. She's, she's, she's not good. I've given her chocolate. She, 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 she's not gonna, she ain't never going to forget me for that. How sexist is that? I've given a woman chocolate. Ah, therefore... Did I say woman? <laughs> oh, that's awful. I know, I said chocolate. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, have we got another caller? Have they gone? Oh, Okay, get Jordan on then. Jordan. Let's get Jordan. It's not Pickford, is it? No, I don't think so. Imagine if a player rang up. Well, there are. Well, there's certainly ex-players on Premier. We know that. Yeah. There's certainly ex-players. Well, they might... need to stick their head above the parapet. Jared Delafay, if you're watching, mate, give us a call. Yeah. We know you're a Premier member. Could we get Wayne to ring up someday? That'd be good, wouldn't it? Maybe. We'll Maybe. get Baz to get Wayne. Is, he, is to... Jordan there, Ned? Well, he's not, though, is he? Come on, Jordan. <laughs> You no, know what's mad though? Can I just say there's people in the comments who are really, 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 really angry. What were you and the about age thing? me and the age thing? This is called entertainment. It's called entertainment. 
me and John always have lovely ding dongs. It's called entertainment. Stop getting, stop worrying about there it. A, there, there is a thing with age. Have you got a mic? Have you got a mic on? There's no point in you talking if you haven't got a mic on. The limit, though, would you let a two hundred year old man? Exactly. The see. No, because see? Of the, because the dust. See, that's the point, isn't it? That how far do you take ages? Isms. If it's nothing to do with age, it doesn't matter how old they are. Why is it offensive if the seventy-seven would not have the two hundred? The blue says. Bad I'd have the same argument about a two hundred year old. No, to be fair, listen, John's John's speaking. John's speaking what how he feels, and I'm speaking how. Mm. You no, know what? I was having a good that good discussion with my missus about this last night. There's too much of in going on in the world at the moment. John, you're gonna get us a YouTube strike. You're go literally gonna get us a YouTube. You don't know how this way. You John's just got us a YouTube strike. Thanks, John. We make no money from this video because John wanted to put Town Called Malice on. He doesn't. Want to That's entertainment, you plonker. No, that was Town Called Malice. Town that was Town Called Malice. Seen. See ya. There's too many people who have different views on things and just aren't prepared to have a chat about it. And you end up having... We talk about, me and my Because we haven't fallen out over age, have we? Me and my missus were having a conversation about the, the stuff going on in the trans world at the moment last okay. night. And we were like, too many people are like, well, I don't like you and you... And they don't have conversations. Mm -hmm. This is what has to happen. People have to have conversations. Chris Smith, age is just a number if you're below 77. Um, <laughs> um, someone, Kevin Murphy says Mike's running up a three hundred and fifty pound phone bill. Yeah, not ringing us. He's not ringing. Maybe Babe Station. <laughs> That's what he said. Oh. Isn't he? Is that what he said? He said didn't you hear him? He said that this phone calls. This phone calls gone differently than the ones yeah. I do. To... Have we got Jordan? All right, cool. Jordan, go on, mate. Can you hear me now? I can hear you, mate. I can hear you now. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Go on, mate. Right. Yeah, well, it's John Pickford speaking. Okay. <laughs> Sound just like him. Um, Very similar. Yeah, it's more of a... I've been... It's more. It's not as in-depth as actually the actual whole club, um, because, I mean, that's just not... It's just a shambles, so it's yeah. pointless even speaking about it at the moment. Um, the only thing I will say is that I think you was talking about the owners um, earlier on, and I, I think I've watched a video prior... Uh, I think Ped said it, about that he's gone from Bielsa and that was nailed on mm. or near enough to then all of a sudden change into Deitch, which, I mean, I think that just shows in itself the issue that we've got, that there's just no direction whatsoever. Mm. But no my plan. question is yeah. really, I, I don't know if any of you seen it because I got a bit of stick for it. I went on Talk Sport the other day and I was on about Sean Deitch. I actually said Sean Deitch to leave, but that was that was because I was just fuming. Yeah. No, I don't think he should leave, obviously, but it's more the th fact of what has he got the obsession with Mike O'Keen playing? I've been, to, I'm, I live in Hull, right? And I've been to the last three home games, mm. which was Tottenham, Fulham, and Newcastle. Mm. And I mean, there's not been, it's not been the greatest, like, obviously, no. but. It's like what? What's his obsession with Michael King? Like I don't. What do we know if anything's happened with uh, with Cody or anything like that? Or why isn't Mina even getting a shout? I just I just don't get it. And is he? Do you think Deitch is actually really the person to make us go forward? Because when you look at Burnley, yeah, they didn't have much of a budget, but it, they couldn't score. And um, we've got the same issue. I know he hasn't been able to really bring anyone in, but it's like. Where do we go? Um, I I just think he came in and he, his objective was to get Michael Keane in the team because he knows him. Um, mm. I think he basically told Connor Cody that he had no future at the club, basically, from from what I'm led to believe. And it was I'm playing Michael yeah. Keane. Yeah, I mean, we were talking about yeah, I mean, before and saying like you know I think. We were, couldn't quite remember when he came back, but he's been back since the Brighton game. Under Lampard, he was back. He so. played. He played at West Ham the week before, so yeah. that's on the manager. He's just chose. And when he first came in, I un I looked at his numbers, and basically Michael Keane was in the team to win everything in the air, and he did. And Tarkowski was there to sort of do everything else, but that's not how football works, is it? You can't yeah. be everywhere at once. No. So I no, but also can't mean Mina could surely do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I swear he Mina doesn't know, that. but he doesn't know Mina though, does he? That's the thing, and that's why I'm not a particular. Don't get me wrong; it's not like I don't. It's not. I couldn't sit here going, I don't. I hate Sean Dyche, but that's why I'm like, ooh, it's that thing of like not prepared to try new things. 
You know, yeah. Sean Dice definitely goes to Benidorm and watches Only Fools and Horses in a bar and <laughs> Mingus Beckies, doesn't he? Do you know what I mean? He does I'm off to Benidorm. He doesn't strike... Well, I'm not having a go at anyone who goes to Benidorm, but he doesn't strike me as someone who's going to, you know, Korea to try new things. So... Well, this is what this is what I don't get. You say that, that but then and I swear when Decore mm. got red carded, he then switched to a four four. Yeah, I guess he's probably. But at the end of the day, he's he's with these day in day out. Yeah. But he, he's got to understand that he's just that useless because he is. I don't think I've I, I don't think I've seen him. I've really. A goal against, uh, yeah. I just, I just think there's so much dead wood at the club and on as a substitution. <laughs> I mean, yeah, uh, mm. yeah, very much so. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, but, the, the, yeah, I, th- I think Ped nailed it. Really, he he's just more comfortable with Keane as a person. I think. Yeah. You know, and, and, but, um, do you, do you, and, and now it's too late for him think... to change it because it's admitting he's wrong. Yeah, do you, if you had Go to, on, if you had to make an honest decision now, would you say we'll get relegated? I know there's optimism, but just with, with the general look of things, do you think? Do you think we're getting any points out the next four games? I do. Yeah, I think. I think. What I think we can definitely get points out of the last two games, mm. and I think yeah. it's all about mentality against Brighton. Yeah, Set, setting up in the right way. I, I don't think yeah. it's. I, I think Brighton could destroy us, and then I also think we could get something out of Brighton. Mm. I haven't wrote it off, but what the, the overriding factor for me for the whole season has been goals. Can you can we score enough goals? Well, Dominic uh, Dominic Alun is back now, so it's slightly changed that perspective. Three games in a row, row one goal, so that's changed yeah. that sort of mentality, maybe. I still think it's. Yeah, up, I, I think Leeds are, are a much worse side than us. Yeah. But I've got the points on the board. I think Forest are a worse side than us, but I've got more points in us and seem to have. I don't know, just the, the ability to score now and again, which we haven't. So I'm not writing it off. I'm not sitting here going, oh, "I will 100 percent stay up." But I'm not. I'm certainly not writing it off. Mm. Yeah. No. I mean, I hope Leeds go down because I mean, because the Leeds. Because the Leeds. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I just every day I just get just just get shouted at <laughs> constantly about Leeds. I'm just like they just need to go down. But it, it's one of them. I'm I'm trying not to be negative. I'm trying to be positive. But I just I just find it. I, like, I'm, I was screaming at the TV against that Leicester game of why hasn't he made us? Oh, tell team. me about and it. I, yeah. I, I, and the worst thing was I went on Talk Sport and I was speaking to him. It was like. Well, why make a substitution if it's not going wrong? Oh. Like, did you watch the game? Yeah, they don't watch the game. It was absolutely knackered. Yeah. It was knackered. I don't understand why. It was like, well, who could he bring on? I'm like, yeah. well, I mean, for one, you could take well, you could take Calvert Lewin off because of the amount of games he's played and put Sims on. But it was more the midfield than mm. anything. And the fact it, the, I said about taking a Wobi off, mm. I was like, well, it, well, he, he could, the guy said he went. Oh yeah, well he's got a bit about him. I was like, right, okay, well yeah, all right, if that's what you think. I think the biggest lesson from that is don't ring talk sport. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. The thing was, I was actually put on Twitter and it said Sean Dyche out as a headline. Oh, I was like, oh yeah, 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 that's that's. But they, they they they'd put like they'd captioned out like pretty much everything that I yeah. said. And then put like the highlights of me saying Sean Dyche out. I was like, right, yeah, okay. That's it, mate. Nice that's one. the problem. With, that's the problem. With it. But, oh, well. Yeah. So. They, they were more fixated about whether it was legit for Jordan to have the uh, <sighs> the penalty no. uh, takers. Just wait things stuff. in whatever way they want to well, take yeah, the and, narrative. And there's two guys in the studio. One always goes black, the other one goes white. And then they get loads of people to pay to, to, to talk great. It's all the ages. They've got, they've got too many ages <laughs> on the, on, in the studio. <laughs> Yeah. You, here's a question, Chris. It's Go not on. really about it's not about Evan, it's more about Leeds. With this whole I'm a bit worried because Sam Allardyce has come in because there's the bounce back and that and that at, at this point of the season that is huge. If that works, can you see Leeds work that working with Leeds? They've got Man City, then Newcastle, then West Ham, then uh, Tottenham. I don't know, honestly. He'll put he'll put ten men behind 
behind the ball in every game and hope that he scraps a point and try maybe get something at the other end. But yeah. I'll be honest, I'm more worried about Everton just picking up. I honestly think if Everton get five points, we'll, we'll stay up. If we get five, yeah. we definitely stay up, in my view. Yeah, yeah. Um, to answer the question about Leeds, City will blow them away, and so will Newcastle. And, and the myth, care. the myth about Allardyce and and, and they they do manage a bounce doesn't really exist statistically either. Mm. It's just perception, and at the moment there'll be lots of Leeds fans thinking Sam will get us out of it, yeah. and there'll be opposition teams. If it wasn't Man City and Newcastle, the two form teams in the division, would be thinking, "Oh, he's going to have them organised. They're not going to be the soft touch we thought." They yeah, were. and Pep will put out probably not a full team no. because he, he's he, he works his squad. And he'll have some heavyweight on the bench if need be. And I just expect them yeah. to get blown away. And then the myth is gone in the first game. Yeah. Then he'll spin. I've only been here a few days yeah. and it is Man City. Then he'll go to Newcastle and he'll get blown away there. Unless it's at home. But it yeah. might be at home. That gives him a bit better chance, I suppose. But, yeah. So, well, I suppose, that, that, I mean, everyone thought, every, if you look at a couple of months back, everyone thought that Everton, oh, they'll be fine. They've got Sean Dyche. And I mean, we're still mm. in it, aren't we? So, totally. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. I hope, I hope so too, mate. I hope so too. Nice yeah. one. Well, anyway, nice one for the call. Thank make, you. Make yeah. sure you ring us instead of talk sport. <laughs> yeah, I will do. It yeah. doesn't was, cost was, anything either. <laughs> I was yeah. in, I was in the middle of um of delivering a car to a customer. I was like, can't really speak right now. Yeah. I'm, on, um, I'm on the toppy TV, mate. So. Is right. But yeah, nice one. Yeah. Good one. Thank you. All right, mate. See you later. Take care. Bye. Um. Yeah, do you know um, uh, Sammy Lee can't take over the job because he's on jury duty, so he can't have Sammy with him. You can't have Sammy. With we him. know he's the brains, and don't he's we? Kicked off on, he's kicked off on um, at the press conference saying the judge wouldn't let him go. I see, and he's fuming with the judge apparently. So well, they wouldn't let Ned off, would they? No, Ned's Ned's more of a name than Sammy Lee is now. Yeah. Clearly, so well Ned learns there is no excuse for avoiding it. No. Yeah. And Ned, and then Ned learned valuable lessons, life lessons that he can carry well change, into his change, seventy-seven. Change someone's life. Let's not go into that, Ned. We've had that discussion today. We don't know whether it was for the better that you changed someone's life, but it's possibly ruined a lot of others. Yeah, ruined a lot of others. What do you there think you of his shorts? Shorts. Just... Interesting choice. One yeah. yesterday as well. Same short. Would he the same short yesterday? Ooh. Ooh. You need to make Ooh. like a little get a little get a little note going on. You need a nose clip, Defo. Yeah. <laughs> right, there you go. Uh big thanks for everyone giving us a call oh. today. Big thanks for everyone leaving comments. As I said, it's not a comment in, it's a phone in. So I do look at them and I try and pick out people when they're giving me abuse for being ageist. Um and I watch it and I put you on a band list. But uh apart from that, give us a that's what we're here for to give us a call. It's all listen, it's all fun. Oh, it's all it's all it's a light relief it's all just a laugh yeah. don't get stressed out about it get stressed out about Everton don't get stressed out about whether I think a 77 year old should be uh, and also what I will say is I'm that's it I'm going to go out and get me 10k time sorted <laughs> that's it <laughs> to prove 80 year olds can't compete with me on the running track you can't be one of the 10k at your age at your age you know what Ned <laughs> Ned, fair play to you. Fair play. You've what you've done there is you've read the room and you've made a joke and it it sort of works. So there you go. Right, thank you to everyone. We'll be back tomorrow half one over on Toffee TV Premiere. So make sure you come and join us for that. The link is in the description and it'll be coming up on the screen in a moment. I do think we've sold one t shirt. Well done that person. So uh, well done for that person. Um Give him another one for free, I say. I'll pay for it. Go on. No, what what no, colour do you want? No. <laughs> How about no? Next week when the show is on, we'll uh, we'll put a discount code in if you buy when the show is on. So that doesn't mean no one buy anything for a week, by the way. I'm waiting for next week. <laughs> you can join Coffee TV Premier tonight and get you 25% off straight away. There you go. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye. Cheers. Bye.